Hi folks, this is Jeremy again to talk about some more features that were included in NetBox version 3.3. In this video, I'm going to be covering custom field grouping and the new ability to toggle the visibility of custom fields. So let's check out an example. Here we've got the site model, just a site instance. Uh, we've got one custom field defined for emergency code. Uh, let's say we want to add some more custom fields because we've recently migrated from some other system uh, and there's some bits of data that we want to keep for correlation in case we ever need to go back and check older records. Uh, so I'm going to add two custom fields here, uh, both on the site model. So first I'm going to add one called uh, legacy ID and this will just be whatever number existed in that old system. We'll make it an integer. Um, it won't be required or anything like that, but we'll go ahead and create that. Uh, and then actually let's change that label so it looks nicer. Let's give it, let's call it that. Okay, and let's create another custom field called, uh, I don't know, legacy name. Oops. Again, these are just some examples. Um, they don't really mean anything to us. Um, and we're gonna make that one a text field, so that's good to go. Okay, so now we've got our two, uh, two custom fields. So if we go back to that site that we were looking at, we should see three of them down here. So we've got emergency code, legacy ID, legacy name. That's pretty easy, but consider what would happen if we had maybe a dozen or so custom fields on, on this model. It would, get, it would start to get a little uh, chaotic, right? Especially if they're not um, naturally ordered alphabetically. Um, now we do have a, a, um, a tool in the custom field model that allows us to influence the ordering, and that is weight. So by default, every custom field has a weight of 100. Now, if I tweak that to be uh, you know, 200 or 50, um, the higher weight fields are going to be listed first, followed by the lower weight fields. Uh, and the reason for that is just to provide a, kind of an overriding function to override uh, the, the natural alphabetic ordering of, of fields by name. Um, but that still doesn't really help, right? Because we, we kind of would like to be able to, to split things out a little bit better. And we can do that now in version 3.3. .3. Uh, so we have this idea of uh, a grouping that has been introduced. So you may remember this from like custom links. So we've had this in NetBox for a while where when you create a custom link, you actually have the ability to define a group name and any links that appear in the same group uh, will actually pop up in a dropdown menu in the UI. Uh, so we've done something kind of similar to that with custom fields. So let's go back to my legacy ID and name. And then we're going to go down here and set a group name. And we're going to call this just legacy. That sounds good enough, right? So we'll apply that. And now if we go back and look at the site model, we see that this has been broken out into a separate group. So we have a legacy group that appears below the non-grouped custom fields. Uh, if I wanted to, I could add a... a a group to that emergency code as well. Let's do that just for, for demonstration purposes. And we're going to say this, uh, we're just going to call this miscellaneous. And now if we check out the site, we'll see that that appears under a group as well. So we have legacy here first, and then we have miscellaneous. Notice that the ordering of the fields has changed because now they're being ordered by group name rather than by just field name. Within each field, excuse me, within each group, they're being ordered, ordered by weight and then by name. Uh, if we wanted the legacy name to pop up first, we could change the weight um, so that it would come up before the leg legacy ID field. Uh, so this is pretty cool, but uh, following our example, let's see what happens when we go to edit this site. Um, let's give it some values. I'm going to say our legacy ID was just a number, and then our legacy name was site. I, I don't know. I'm just making things up. <laughs> so let's say that's all. Let's just pretend that's real. Uh, but now that that's been done, let's say that we're in a, in a state where everything's been migrated from the old system and we don't want anyone to go in there and mess with stuff, right? This is all kind of locked in. It's historical. There's no reason that it should ever need to change, uh, because we've already validated that this was imported from the old system correctly. So what we can do is back on the custom field view, we're going to select these fields, we're going to edit selected, and we're going to go to UI visibility. So this is another new feature in NetBox 3.3. And we're going to change these to read only. Now, when we do that, we go back and look at the site. Nothing changes when we look at the site. However, when we go to edit the site, 
under custom fields, you'll see that these are now read only. I can't modify these. These have been locked out from users. So these can still be modified through the API. And that's one of the common use cases. Uh, so that maybe you have additional data that's been attached to an object in that box, and you want that to be accessible programmatically from other tools, but you don't want users that are just going through on the user interface to modify that data. So that's a really good example of how, to, how we can do that. And here this way, no one can, no one's going to go in there and, and, and you know, mess with the values that, should, that they shouldn't be touching. Uh, there's another option for UI visibility as well, and that is to, to hide it completely. So let's just say revisiting that or the other use case where there's some data that we want to attach for some programmatic reason, but it might not even be um, uh, relevant to human users. Maybe we don't even care. Maybe it's like some checksum that was, that was generated from a change or, or something like that, where there's no reason that a human's even going to care. It's only ever than some automation tool that's ever going to read or write that value. Well, we can hide those as well just to, to cut down on clutter. Uh, so we'll go back here and we'll set the UI visibility for those fields to hidden. And now when we look at the UI, I'm um, sorry, when we go back to look at the site, it's gone. They're not there anymore. So that works for both grouped and non-grouped fields. Um, when we go to edit the site, oops. again, it doesn't even show up. So the user is completely unaware that that data even exists. But when we go to look at that site in the API, we'll see that the custom fields are still available. All right, so I go down here under custom fields. We see the custom fields listed down here. So we've got our legacy ID and legacy name, just like we have emergency code. So the, again, they're still all accessible through the API. Um, they're just not visible on the uh, to human users on through um, excuse me through the user interface. So. That's another feature that and grouping uh, both have been introduced in that box 3.3 that was just released in August. So check that out if you haven't already. We've got our public demo available at demo.netbox.dev as well. And uh, I'll probably do a couple more videos on these features. So keep an eye out for those. I'll see you next time.